Hello, everyone. This is an introduction to the Stellarium program, which we're looking at in lesson four as we learn our reference frames. And I've programmed the uh, Stellarium to show the night sky from Saeed's point of view, uh, looking at the chart that we've been using in lessons uh, three and four with 27 Aries rising. And I want to show you a little bit about how to um, create this view so that you can uh, work uh, with this program on your own. We're going to use this a bit as we go along. It will be helpful when we look at constellations and fixed stars and when we look at uh, eminence and maybe some other things. Um, so it will be uh, helpful for, for other purposes, but it's just another way for you to visualize the um, the coordinate systems and motion. Now, when you open up uh, Stellarium, it will default, I think, to Las Vegas at the current time, uh, and it will search the internet for the time. But what I've done is I've programmed it to be our chart. If you move your cursor to the left, um, you'll see that certain tools pop out. One is the location window. That's where we locate the chart. And there's a little search bar here. And if you type in Minneapolis, you can see that you can double click and get Minneapolis. There's lots of cities here. You can add more cities, but probably most of the major ones are, are, are here. So we have Minneapolis as our city. I've already pre-programmed it. Then we look at our date and time window. And this is where we determine the year, month, day, and the time. Um, now, what you'll notice is that Stellarium defaults to rotate the heavens second by second. So you have to make it pause by clicking this button down here at the bottom. And if you program the time, you can press the button so it pauses and it will stay uh, the time that you tell it. And you can click and drag the heavens up and down, and uh, there are various options for how you want the sky to look. So what we have here is we are looking south, uh, and uh, from where Saeed is looking, that should be the meridian. So let's actually put the meridian in. If we go to this toolbar on the left, we get the sky and viewing options window. And if we look at the markings tab, we have uh, a couple of choices. We can look at the entire coordinate grid for our reference frames or just single lines. For the moment, uh, uh, let's, well, let's actually do the, the, um, the grids so you can see that and then we'll take it out. Let's first look at the horizontal reference frame. This is azimuth and Amukantaroth, or altitude. So you can see that uh, if, you follow, if you look at these numbers here, it gives you the increments of, alt, of uh, azimuth going around. So as we look due south, it's 180 azimuth. If we wanna click and drag, and if we look due east, we can see that that's 90. And if we click and drag and go all the way north behind us, next to the nice little farmhouse, you can see that we have zero uh, azimuth. And these are the Almukantarath or altitude circles. You can see along the side, it tells you the altitude. So for example, uh, we can see that Antares at this location, this fixed star Antares, the azimuth is between 210 and 220, so maybe uh, 213 and two, or 214 azimuth. And then the altitude, or Amukantaroth of, of, of Antares, is a little over 10, between 10 and 15. So I'd say maybe 11. The altitude is 11. So in the horizontal system, that would be the coordinates of Antares. And you could do the same with Jupiter and Saturn. It looks like Saturn in this reference frame in Minneapolis 
he has an azimuth of 160, almost exactly. And then his altitude is between 20 and 25. So maybe um, 23, 24, maybe more like 23. So you can use this coordinate system with, with any of them. But let's take out the grid and just show the meridian. So we'll take off the grid and just look at the meridian for Minneapolis. So this is the meridian. It's the same as 180 degrees azimuth. So this is due south, and this is where, uh, if we're watching the um, zodiac go past the meridian throughout the day, whatever degree of the ecliptic is on the meridian is the midheaven. So let's let's put in the uh, zodiac. We won't do the whole grid, um, although we could we could do it briefly. We could do the ecliptic grid for this date. This is what the entire grid system for the zodiac would be like. And so look, for example, here, see where Saturn and Jupiter are. Last summer was near the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. And this line tells you that this is 300 degrees longitude. That's the same as zero Aquarius. And you'll remember that for a long time, Saturn was in early Aquarius, Jupiter was in late Capricorn. So this shows you uh, where they were um, on that grid. Now let's, but let's take out the whole grid and let's simplify it, just show you where the ecliptic itself was. So here's the ecliptic and they were almost exactly on the ecliptic. Now if we click and drag, you can see the ecliptic continues over towards the east. And here's the moon, she's south of the ecliptic. So she has southern latitude and so does Mars. He's a little bit south of the ecliptic. And if we click and drag a little further, we see that the ecliptic disappears a little north of due east. So now let's, um, let's look south again. And you'll see that because of the curvature of the zodiac, because it's oblique or askew, the curve looks a little unusual and it's going to start passing by the, um, the meridian like the um, east, you'll start to see the angle change. So let's animate the chart by clicking down here. This right pointing arrow will start it, uh, will start the heavens animating at um, uh, one second. But if you click it a couple of more times, it will go minute by minute. So let's first start it. You can see down here, it tells you what time it is. Let's click it again and make it go faster. And click it one more time. Now it's going minute by minute, much faster. And uh, the nice thing about Stellarium is that it shows you a, a version of what the daylight would actually look like but you're still able to see the planets. Now let's make this go a little faster. See, and you can see them. Well, it looks like it makes the uh, planets disappear as they, um, depending on the brightness of the sky, but I'm sure you can change that. And now we can see the sun Notice that the sun is moving towards the left in the ecliptic because he's moving by secondary motion in, in the zodiac. But that, that ecliptic, along with his motion, at the same time is being carried towards the right across the meridian. There you can see. And you can see that as the heavens turn, that angle of the ecliptic starts to flatten out and it will then kind of shift and change toward up towards the right like it's doing right now.
So there's a number of things that we can do with this program. Um, that is the basic thing I want to show you now so that you can help visualize these coordinate systems as they rotate at what might seem unusual or illogical directions.